Hello, my lovelies. Dr. Drosselmeyer here. As some of you may know, despite not having much of a drive myself, I do occasionally make adult toys along with the rest of my strange creations. However, I do not waste my time with ordinary dull old dongles. I tend to make things slightly more interesting. And on the suggestion of a friend of mine who happens to live in Florida, which I'm fairly certain has nothing to do with their particular tastes or kinks, I began sculpting and designing my own variation of the classic facehugger creature from the Alien films. A hugger for the nethers, if you will. A, uh, foop hugger. <laughs> Excuse me. So I started out by drawing out a few designs and then sculpting the fingers. There's going to have to be eight of them but I managed to just sculpt one and recreate it through a mold repeatedly. I was able to get a lot of detail into them. However, trying to make them poseable proved to be quite a pain. Once I got that all sussed out, I began working on the body section. Now anybody who's familiar with the work of H.R. Giger, the man who created the alien creatures, pretty much everything he makes is phallic. I mean, the front of these things are essentially a vagina with a dick coming out of it. Uh, that's what's going to go in that spot where those three spikes are, sort of nestles in. So really making this thing an adult toy was just the next step forward, really. I have often said that getting a tremendous amount of detail into a creature just requires time. Well, <laughs> time and a Dremel. Once the substance had hardened, I got in there and started carving out all the lumpy details that I simply couldn't get while it was too squishy. And speaking of squishy, here's that wonderful two-part mixture that is Dragon Skin Platinum Cure 20. At this particular stage, I was experimenting with various different mix-in colors using mica powder. Kind of looks like caramel, doesn't it? Come to think of it, I could go for a candy bar. Oh, so once I've got all that, I'll then start pouring it into a small hole at the top of a mold that I made using silicone and an outer shell of plaster. After letting it cure for several hours, I start the arduous process of trying to pull the whole damn thing apart. Now, to be fair, this was the very first mold I had made that was larger than a small ring. So, honestly, I feel like it came out pretty well. I mean, just look at all that lovely detail. Outside of that, I spent the better part of two months making one mold after another, just trying to get the fingers right. It's amazing how something so narrow can be so difficult to recreate. Now, as is the case with all two-part molds, you end up getting a little bit of squish out the sides. That, of course, is easily remedied with an exacto. I call this one Old Stabby, as I have a really awful habit of poking myself in the thumb with it. Now, a lot of folks would say that this looks like a tremendous pain in the arse, but honestly, I find it very satisfying peeling those bits off. Once again, back to mixing a bit more silicone, and then we start pouring it into the mold that will be the ovipositor at the center, aka the dongle. Every now and then, I go a little too fast and I get an air bubble. Easily enough, I just stop pouring and wait for it to do like my Uncle Nigel after Curry Sunday. And right back to it. Finally, I add a small cap that will leave impressions for those spikes you saw on the body earlier in the video. Add a little extra silicone to bond it at the base, and voila! I think it likes you, Burke. And then I started the very long and arduous process of sculpting the tail. I would have thought this would have been the easiest part, but really, carving every single niche and curve into this thing to give it that perfect combination of a snake and rat tail takes forever. And now a peek at the mold making process. Now there are a couple of ways to go about this, but since this particular piece lays flat to the ground, I'll basically just put in a box around it and start pouring the mold material all around it. It'll get everywhere except under the bottom, and that is where I will pour the silicone. the mold made and the silicone poured in, all that's left to do is easily peel it out. Only sometimes it's not so easy. I am known to occasionally forget to put in as much release agent as I should and I have to get Mr. Stabby out just to get it loose. 
Our digits were bleeding like the walls of the Amityville house after that. And then at last, we have a creature you'd be proud to take home to meet your mother. Christ, would you look at that thing? You could take an eye out with that. And on that subject, I suddenly realized that I should probably drop some instructions to prevent that exact problem from occurring. And there you have it. Easy peasy. I only lost three months of my life and six pints of blood. Subsequently, if you would like to own one of these monstrosities, I am not currently accepting money for legal reasons. However, I am more than happy to trade. If you are willing to purchase me one gallon of Dragon Skin 20 Platinum Grade Silicone, I will cast you one. Link in the descriptions. Sweet dreams, my lovelies.